Hi everyone, it's MJ the Fellow Actory, and in this video we're talking about Pokemon the trading card game. And the reason why we're doing this is because in August there is going to be the 2023 World Championship happening in Japan. Now what makes this really cool for us in South Africa is for the first time we're going to be having two special event tournaments based in Cape Town and Johannesburg in the month of June where the winner gets all expense paid to go represent their country in Japan. So that is very, very cool. So if you've ever wanted to go to Japan, the birthplace of Pikachu, you can now go play in one of these tournaments and if you win, boom, you're in Japan. So how are we going to do it? Well, we don't have years of experience, but hopefully we can use our actuarial ability to assist us with this game. So I only started playing competitively in the month of April, so I know it's a bit ambitious, but I'm bringing in some actuarial strategies, for instance, loss distributions to just understand the opponent's decks, as well as hypergeometric distributions to build our own decks. But in this video, we're not gonna be talking about the actuarial science behind it. No, in today's video, I wanna show you how to play and invite you to come join me at these tournaments in Cape Town or Johannesburg and play with me. And what you're gonna see is that Pokemon trading card game is kinda like a combination of poker and chess. Poker because you're playing with cards and there's a big luck element, but chess because there's a lot of strategy to be played as well as before you start the game. How you build your deck will determine your odds. So if you like chess, if you like poker, you're definitely going to love the Pokemon trading card game. So what I wanna do in this video is just explain the basics, talk a little bit about some of these decks that I've made, and like I say, I wanna invite you to join me in Joburg on the 10th of June or Cape Town on the 17th of June. Cause yeah, let's make a team, let's go. I've already got a couple of friends involved, but you know, the more the merrier. So let's jump straight into it. I am gonna be using WikiHow. Uh, they've got some images which I decided to pull in order to make this video on how to play Pokemon. Now, how I like to start teaching anything is to start with the purpose, the objective, the goal, what are we trying to do? So in Pokemon, what you wanna do is to win and you win by taking six prize cards. Now the natural question arises, well, how do you take a prize card? You can take a prize card by knocking out a Pokemon. And what we're gonna see is that Pokemon have got different prize values. You've got your basic Pokemon, which count for one prize. Those Pokemon can evolve into a stage one and then into a stage two. There's still one prize for knocking them out. But then there's these V cards. Now the basic V cards take two prizes. The V stars, which evolves from the V, takes also two cards. EX cards also take two prizes, but then there are these things called V max cards, which take three prizes. So they're like the big strong Pokemon. But let's maybe go through that a little bit quicker. Oh, sorry, slower. Uh, one prize cards, this is an example of a basic Pokemon. You can see it then evolves, that's a stage one, and then that is a stage two. So they kind of look similar, but right in the top left-hand corner, you can see if it's basic stage one or stage two. Like I say, knock out any of these and you'll get one prize card. When it comes to two prize cards, there's the basic V cards, there's the V star cards, which evolve from the basic V, and there are these EX cards. Again, they will say it right at the top, and they'll say it at the bottom, you'll see there's the V rule, the V star rule, and the Pokemon EX rule that says, when this Pokemon is knocked out, your opponent takes two prizes. That's the nice thing about Pokemon, is that the cards literally are the rule books, like they explain everything as you go along. And then three prize cards is if you can take out a V max. V max cards, very, very powerful, very, very strong, but you can see that rule right at the bottom that when your Pokemon V max is knocked out, your opponent takes three prize cards. So yes, you can play with these cards and they'll be very aggressive, but if you get knocked out, you're gonna be losing a lot of prizes to your opponent. And essentially, the first person to take all six prizes wins the game. So you can put in strong Pokemon, but then it's very risky, or you can put in weak Pokemon, cover your risks, but then you're not gonna hit that hard. And for those actors out there, you can really see the whole risk and reward kind of playing out in this game. But I think that's a staple of, of many of these trading cards. Um, so now we wanna ask ourselves, okay, we need, to, we need to get prize cards, we get prize cards by knocking out Pokemon. 
how do we knock out a Pokemon? Well, if we look at the Pokemon card, we will now see in the top right hand corner, there is this thing that says HP, hit points, health points, whatever you want to call it. But 60 is the key word there. What we need to do is reduce that to zero and we can reduce it to zero by attacking it. So our attacks reduce the hit points. And once it goes down to zero, that Pokemon has been knocked out. So wait, our Pokemon can attack? Yes. So let's look at how we can attack. So in the middle of the card, you'll have the attacks. So here we have this thing called memory skip. The damage is 10. So if this Pokemon was to fight against a very similar Pokemon, like an identical one, it would require six turns to knock it out because 10, 10, 10, 10, all the way to get to 60. But what you'll see with these attacks is sometimes they come with a little bit of a story that tell you exactly what it can do. But more importantly, to the left, you will see the symbol over here. And this is an energy cost. So you need to attach an energy card in order to do this attack. Now, these energy cards are, are interesting because you can only attach one per turn from your hand. So if you want a really, really strong Pokemon that requires a lot of energy, it's gonna take a couple of turns to get them ready. Or, and we'll look at this a little bit later in the video, you can attach trainer cards that will allow you, or play uh, trainer cards that allow you to attach more energy cards. And you can sometimes have Pokemon that can assist each other. And this is where you start seeing that the game is very interconnected because other Pokemon can support your attacking Pokemon. And in one case they can do that is they can give it energy. Now, like I said, strong attacks need lots of energy. So let's look very quickly at a common little strategy. And a common strategy involves these two Pokemon working together. So Zyken V will be the attacking Pokemon and Gardevoir will be the supporting Pokemon on the bench. And if we look at the attack of Zyken, we see that it does 60 damage plus 30 more damage for each psychic energy that is attached to this Pokemon. Now you can attach as many energy as you want to the Pokemon. Now, God of War has got this ability that says as often as you like during your turn, you may attach an energy card, as long as it's in your discard pile, we'll also talk about that a little bit later, to one of your psychic Pokemons. If you attach energy to a Pokemon in this way, you also have to put two damage counters or 20 damage on that Pokemon. And you can't use this ability on a Pokemon that would be knocked out. So essentially what you can do is you start off with the base damage of 60, and then you can put on 10 damage, well, attach 10 energy to Zyken and, uh, and take, you know, 200 damage so that it still has 20 left. And then boom, if my maths is correct, you're doing 360 damage to the opposing Pokemon. Now you very rarely will attach that many energy to the Zyken because what you'll want to do is look at how much health your opponent has. If they only have 200, no point doing 360 damage and hurting your Pokemon more, because like I said, if you've only got 20 HP remaining, you're gonna be very vulnerable to your opponent's turn when they come to attack you. But what we're seeing here is, I know I'm going a little bit quickly, is we're looking at how, so maybe just quickly to recap, to win you need prize cards, to get prize cards, you need to knock out a Pokemon. You knock out a Pokemon when its HP goes to zero. You can reduce its HP to zero by using an attack, but by using an attack, you need energy and you can attach energy either from your hand or use other Pokemon's abilities to support you. So let's maybe recap where we are. So this is something like what your, what your hand would look like. And I know we've been talking about discard pile and active Pokemon, so let's point out all of these things. When you're playing the game, this will be your board setup. You've got your prizes to the left of you, given by this blue arrow. You've got your deck of cards given on the, the green, on the right, and then just below your deck where little squirtles hanging out over there, uh, where the red arrow, that is your discard pile. So whenever you play cards or Pokemon get knocked out, they end up in the discard pile. Now with that previous strategy, we saw that that Pokemon can pull energy from the discard pile. Other Pokemon can pull from the deck, so it's important just to be mindful of where those energies are coming from. And then in the middle, we have our Pokemon in play. And we'll see that we've got our active Pokemon that's positioned right at the top, and then the bench. You can have up to five Pokemon on your bench. And what we can see is a good setup for the God of War deck is to have Zycon in the attacker role. 
you've got God of War who's getting you know the energy to to Zycan. However, it needs to pull it from the discard pile. And this is where this other Pokemon called Cruella comes in and says, you may discard a card from your hand in order to use this ability. Once during your turn, you may draw two cards. So not only is Cruella drawing cards into your hand, which is a good thing, gives you more options, but you can also choose a card to discard. Most players choose to discard that psychic energy because now that it's in their discard pile, they can then move it into Zycan and allow it to attack. And what this deck also sometimes has is a mana P and it has a, an ability called a uh, wave veil and this is prevent all damage done to your bench pokemon by attacks from your opponent's pokemon and this is just to protect your cruella because you can see with only 80 hp um she's quite weak so you want to make sure that she's protected so that she can do refinement get those energy cards into the discard pile and then god of war can support Zycon. and you can start to see how all the cards are pretty much connected and that's what makes for a good gameplay so when you see people playing the game and all of that you want each and every single one of your cards to contribute to your overarching uh, strategy and that's going to make you very very effective but for now let's maybe just go through some of the basics like how would you know what do you do per turn so you've set up your prizes you've you know you shuffle your your cards so you'd start you draw seven, that's going to be your starting hand. You make sure you've got a Pokemon. Then what you do is you play six uh, cards face down. Those are your prizes. And now your turn will start once you've placed your active Pokemon. So what you're going to do is to start, you will draw a card from your deck. Make sure you don't forget to draw a card from your deck. Um, you can then play some trainer cards, which is what we're going to talk about uh, in the next slide. And then after you've played your trainer cards, you can then interact with your Pokemon and we're going to see that there's a variety of things that you can do to interact with your Pokemon. So playing trainer cards. This is where it does get a little bit a little bit confusing but again the cards do tell you exactly what they do. So for instance you get item cards and this is for instance a ultra ball. This ball if you discard another two cards from your hand you can then go into your deck and find any Pokemon you want. Again, this can work really nicely with that deck we saw earlier. You discard some energies because you want the energies in the discard pile. You can then go find God of War out of your deck, place it down, boom, and you're ready to, to cause some havoc. Then there are also tool cards. Tool cards can only, you can only attach one tool card per Pokemon unless you have a special Pokemon that allows multiple tools. Uh, but most of the time, one tool per, per Pokemon, and then they'll tell you exactly what they do. So in this case, you've got the choice belt, the attacks of the Pokemon this card is attached to do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon V. So if you're playing against a Pokemon that's, and when it says Pokemon V, it's talking about Vs, V stars, V maxes. So for me, I like this card because I look at the loss distribution of all the health points of the various cards, and if one of my attacks can't meet the damage or a pure knockout, I'll maybe include a choice spell in my deck to make sure that I can knock out that Pokemon, you know, prevent it from, from hurting me by taking it out quickly. So those are tool cards. So tool cards you attach to your Pokemon, item cards you just play and you do what their, their effect is. You can play as many item cards as you want and as many um, tool cards to as many Pokemon as you want. Supporter cards though, you can only play one per turn. And this is what makes them interesting because they're a lot stronger. You can see in this case, this person can, oh, and supporter cards normally have human characters. So you search your deck for an item and a Pokemon tool card. You can then reveal them and you put them into your hand. So what's nice about Arvin is you can play Arvin. You can then say, oh, I need an Ultra Ball to find a specific Pokemon or, oh, I need that choice belt in order to wipe out my opponent. So supporter cards give you a lot of options, but you can only play one per turn. So you want to not have too many of them because there's no point having 10 in your hand and you can only play one per turn. So supporter cards are very powerful, but you need to use them wisely. Also beware that your opponent might use it to disrupt your play, or they might use it to help them find that very card that they need. And then you have something called stadiums. And stadiums, I find them very annoying because they keep ruining my gameplay, especially this one called Path to the Peak. It says Pokemon with the rule box in play have no abilities. So if you've got a Pokemon V, a Pokemon V star, and someone plays Path to the Peak, you can't use your really cool super ability. But 
what's lovely is if you look in the bottom in that green part it will tell you how the rules work around stadiums it says this stadium stays in play when you play it so you play it and you keep it on the on the table you only discard it if another stadium comes into play um, and you can't you know have a stadium with the same name replacing that stadium so my defense against this path to peak is to have another stadium of my own and play it or there is pokemon that can destroy stadiums there also are supporter uh, pokemon sorry supporter cards like one called worker which discards the stadium in play and draws three cards so you want to make sure what your weakness is and then make sure you are able to you know retaliate and make sure that you can yeah that something like path to the peak doesn't ruin your game so make sure your deck has enough of these pokemon or supporter cards that can help you continue playing so these are your trainer cards but then i said you also end your turn by interacting with your pokemon now what you can do is you can put a pokemon from your hand onto the bench sometimes that's a really good idea especially if they've got a nice ability and you want to support your other pokemon or if they're a basic and you've got a stage one you need them to be on the bench in order to get them up but just realizing or just realize that if you play a pokemon on your bench you're then exposing it to risk. I know, another actuarial term here, because what your opponent can do is they can sometimes attack the bench Pokemon, so you just want to make sure that it doesn't get wiped out by a surprise attack. But yeah, benching your Pokemon from your hand is one of the first things you want to do when you're interacting with your Pokemon. Two, if you've got an evolution play and it's the second turn that that Pokemon has been on the bench or in the active spot, you can then evolve it into a much stronger Pokemon. So evolving Pokemon is quite a fun thing to do. Then don't forget, I see new players forgetting this all the time, to use the ability of their Pokemon. Some of them can even be used from the bench. This is what really makes your deck very powerful. Of course, it does open up that weakness to Path of the Peak Stadium card. And I think that's what I like about Pokemon is that every powerful strategy can be countered. And we're gonna exploit that a little bit later on in this video. Then you want to make sure you attach an energy card to one of your Pokemon. You don't have to do it, but if you've got the energy card, you might as well because you can only do this once per turn. Then, let's say you don't like your Pokemon that's in the active spot, you can retreat your active Pokemon, sometimes by paying the retreat cost, and which in most cases means discarding energy, and switch it with one of your Pokemon from the bench. You can only retreat Pokemon once, unless you have trainer cards that allow you to switch your Pokemon in and up, and that can sometimes be a very popular strategy, especially if you want to use all of the abilities, and the abilities can only be used from the active spot. Once you've done all of that, that's when you can then declare an attack if you have enough energy to do so and basically each attack will tell you exactly what it's doing now a nice way to maybe remember these six steps that you can do while interacting with your pokemon it's kind of like beer yeah okay it's, it's, it's not really a word but these are the six steps that you can do with interacting your pokemon now if you were to read a book on how to play pokemon they talk about this thing called special conditions in the competitive play very rarely do you see special conditions coming about. But very quickly, confused means, if your Pokemon's confused, you go to flip a coin. If it's tails, you do 30 damage to yourself. If heads, you attack like normal. Poison Pokemon, they take 10 damage every single turn, but you can retreat them and bring them back and that will recover the position. In fact, that does it for all of them, except for Paralyzed where you can't retreat. So Paralyzed can't retreat and can't attack. Asleep, you can retreat, and you can also flip a coin to wake up. And then burned is like similar to poison, but it's 20 damage and you flip to see if you recover. But like I said, don't worry about special conditions. They very, very rarely come up at the competitive level. Let's rather talk about weakness, resistance, and retreat. And let me rather just get, oh, oh no, we can put it up here. Um, so what we're gonna see is weakness, resistance, and retreat. So we got this new card and right at the bottom, it's got this weakness, dark energy, resistance is the fighting energy. And essentially what that means is that it will take double damage from dark Pokemon, but it will take 30 less damage from uh, fighting Pokemon. Mew, because Mew can fly around and is light and fluffy, it's got a zero retreat cost, which makes Mew very powerful for switching in and switching out. What you'll also see is, um, oh yeah, with this whole weakness thing, the best card to play to, to just 
take down Mew, and I included in my deck, is Drapion V. It's also got this wild style ability, which says this costs one less for each of your opponent's single strike, rapid strike, fusion strike Pokemon in play. So basically, I'm doing 380 damage to Mew with no energy cost, because how the Mew deck works is they normally have quite a lot of other fusion Pokemon on the bench supporting supporting Mew. Especially if you look at Mew's attack, it says choose one of your benched fusion strike Pokemon's attack to use. So it needs a big bench, Drapion comes in and takes them out. Now, fusion strike, rapid strike battles, you don't really have to worry too much about them, other than the fact that sometimes they can, like you saw with the attack, the cross fusion strike can only use a fusion strike Pokemon's attack, so it has to have that little pink logo, and various energy cards also only can be applied to fusion strike or rapid strike or battles. But like I said, you don't when it's when you're playing for your first time, you don't have to worry too much about about that. Um, we'll talk very quickly about deck building. Okay, deck building you want to have at least one Pokemon. You can only also have one Radiant Pokemon. Radiant Pokemon are slightly stronger, but you can only have one copy of them in your deck. Um, then you can only have four copies of every single Pokemon. So, you know, you can't have a deck of 59 Pikachus, even though that would be awesome. So only four copies of a Pokemon. In fact, you can only have four copies of any other card. So you need that variety between Pokeballs, supporters, and all these other things. One card that you can have lots of are your basic energies. Like I say, you can have up to 59 of these ones, because remember, you have to have at least one basic Pokemon in your deck. Now, this is the hardest part of the game. Like, if you don't build a proper deck, you're probably not gonna do very, very well. So what people do is they either copy a deck list from a champion online, or they can use advanced actuarial modeling to optimize the likelihood of their strategies. We're going for the second one, although having said that, we do look at the deck list of the champions, use that as our scaffolding, and then we try to refine, play a lot of games online, and keep improving it. Now, let's say it's your first time um, not playing decks or first time playing Pokemon, and you're thinking, you know what, I've never played this game before. You know, I, I don't have time to learn all the cards that are out there. I also don't have enough cards to make a competitive deck. I still don't have you know, the patience to learn how to use all of these competitive decks, but I still want to win. That's where I come in to help you because I've created some, some cheeky little decks. Um, I've, got your, I've got like three very, very cheeky decks. One of them we're gonna talk quite a bit about in this, in this video. Uh, but how, why do I call them cheeky decks? Because like I say, most people come onto the, the internet and they see what are the top 10 decks. So I play with this Meridian Regilecki, which is the seventh most popular deck uh, with 5.5% people playing it. It does have a very low win rate, um, <laughs> but I don't know, I, I enjoy the electric Pokemon. But if we look here, we see that Lost Zone Box at 15.38%, it is one of the most likely, God of War 10.49%. In South Africa, we even see these ratings go a little bit higher because Lost Zone Box is a lot cheaper to create than a Lugia Box, which is quite an expensive one to make. And that's why, even though it's got a slightly lower win rate, it's more popular because cost is also taken into consideration. Where, yeah, trying to get a Gratina or a Lugia V-Star, it's very, very difficult and expensive to do so. So if we were to, like I say, focus on Lost Zone Box and we click on it, we can see here um, how they've placed. So, I mean, what? I think there was one on the, the 30th of May that also kind of won. But these things are just, they're just winning. Some people are coming third, second. And the lovely thing is we can tap on the list and we can see exactly what Pokemon they're playing with. Now, there's many variations, but most of the time Lost Box plays with this thing called Comfy, which once during your turn, if this Pokemon's in the active spot, you may look at the top two cards of your deck, put one of them into your hand and put the other into the Lost Zone. Now, why does it want to put these things into the Lost Zone? What's the Lost Zone? It's like a discard pile that you can't pull out of. Because once Comfy comes in and it starts, and they'll normally have three or four of these, and they'll rotate them, rotate them, rotate them. And they'll have a huge amount of cards in their hand and a lot of cards in the Lost Zone. Once they have these cards in the Lost Zone, you can see they can bring in Cramorant, who, which says if you have four or more cards in the Lost Zone, ex ignore all energy in this Pokemon's attack cost which is really cool, it means this Cramorant can come in a little bit later and do 110 damage instantly. But 
if you, if you have 10 or more cards in the Lost Zone, you can bring out the Sable Eye, which allows you to put 12 damage counters, which is 120 damage, on your opponents in any way you like, separated by 10. So you can put 60 on this Pokemon, 10 on these, 30 here, and you can actually set yourself up for a very powerful attack. You can either wipe out the bench, and Manipi's Veil doesn't protect it because it's not seen as damage, it's seen as damage counters, which is also a little bit of a tricky, interesting thing on the game. But what you can do is a lot of damage, and then when you've got your Radiant Greninja, you can see this attack does 90 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. So these Pokemon collectively are very, very strong. They all work nicely together. But like I say, Sable Eye requires a lot of cards to be in the Lost Zone. So does Cramorant. They'll sometimes have Manape, and they'll sometimes have Snorlax, and then they'll sometimes end the game with Kygor, which does this Aqua Storm, which is very, very devastating. But don't worry. We will shut them down before they ever get to Kygor, because what you're noticing is that their core Pokemon all depend on abilities, especially this one, Flower Selecting. So Flower Selecting, it is the Kingpin ability. Now, we can't just pay, play that Path to the Peak Stadium card, which hurts me, but what you'll see is that that Stadium card only prevents the abilities of Pokemon Vs and above. All of these Pokemon are basic Pokemon, so Path to the Peak doesn't prevent them, doesn't hurt them. And also, because they're all basic Pokemon, they're only losing one prize at a time. So this deck is really, really, really difficult to play against. It's very slow as well. And what they're doing in the meantime is they're building a large collection of, of various cards. And I mean, you can also go and like look at their, their trainer cards. And you'll see from their trainer cards that a lot of them allow their Pokemon to be switched around. Some can also put cards into the last box, but most of the time they're around energy, applying energy and doing other cool things once cards are in the lost zone. Fortunately, we have a nice strategy. And the strategy is to basically play these two Pokemon. So the first one, I mean, essentially, I, would, I wouldn't be too bad if we just played four copies of Empoleon and left our Klefki at, at all. The problem with that is that if we don't draw Pokemon in our first turn, which with only four cards is quite unlike, is yeah, not gonna be the best best odds, you allow them to build up a very big hand, which is what we're trying to prevent in the first place. But we don't have any other Pokemon that doesn't have this ability because then they can implement their strategy. So both Klefki and Empoleon have very similar abilities. Klefki says, as long as this Pokemon is in the active spot, basic Pokemon in play, have no abilities except for mischievous lock and what did we see all of those pokemon in the previous slide were all basic none of them were evolution and empress eye says as long as this pokemon is in active spot your opponent's basic pokemon in play have no abilities except for pokemon with rule box but none of their pokemon have got the rule boxes except for that gradient greninja greninja would count as a rule box so you do want to still be mindful of that. But what you're doing is you're preventing the comfy, the flower selecting, you're basically disrupting their entire game so they can't really get out to start. And by only having these Pokemon in play, with Empoleon's power of 130 means you can take out their Pokemon in one go, they're gonna to struggle to take you out in one go. Even with Cramorant and Redding Greninja hitting you in two consecutive terms, it's only 200 damage in total, you've got 210. And what you'll see is the rest of the deck list that I've created, they contain cards that actually heal these Pokemon, you know, make them take less damage, um, do a whole bunch of support around them. So that's one of the great things about this deck is that it is specifically designed to take down Lost Box. It's very weak against everything else. Well, not everything else. There's one other deck that it also stands a little bit of a chance by, and that is the second most popular deck, and this is Godvon. Here you can see, 30th of May, somebody won with it um, on their road to Japan. Uh, you can see everyone's very excited about this World Cup in, in Japan. So recently got played, and you can see it's winning, not winning as many times as Lost Box. There are some fifths, some thirds, some fourths, but I mean fourth out of 343 people, and I think yeah, it was kind of like on one of the same tournaments um, that one of the guys won. But God of War, also, it, it, it can be vulnerable to this deck, especially when we start adding in some special tool cards. And the tool cards we're putting in a box of disaster and panic mask purely to try and frustrate the God of War one. 
So box of disasters, you attach it to Empoleon V, and it means that whenever it does get taken out, you do eight damage to your opponent Pokemon. And we know with Gardevoir that while strengthening their Pokemon up with lots of energy, the drawback is that they have to place all these damage counters, which means as soon as you wipe out my Pokemon, you're also taking yourself out and you know, kind of leveling the Pokemon fields when it comes to the prizes, and we coming in with the next turn to attack, we've now got momentum. So Box of Disasters is not good for Gardevoir. Also, Panic Mask can be attached, which says prevent all damage to the Pokemon this card is attached to from your opponent's Pokemon that have 40 HP or less. So let's say your Empoleon's gets taken out, you're struggling to find another one, you can put Clefy in with the Panic Mask, and unless they can find out a way to try and heal their Pokemon, they won't be able to attack, and that Mischievous Lock is going to, like I say, prevent quite a few of, of the attacks that um, that Refinement is going to be doing. So what you can do is just stall the game a little bit more. Now, like I say, we do have a little bit of an actuarial calculator which I'll share after Japan um, on YouTube, but I did use it to run through this deck so that we have a 60% chance of drawing at least one Pokemon on turn one. I mean, as actuaries, you know, there's a hypergeometric distribution that I'm taking in series. You know, we've got a draw of seven on a deck of 60, that's our population. You know, you can do all the permutations and combinations in your head if you want to check the maths. Um, but what happens is if you don't, if you don't get a Pokemon in your first turn or when you, when you take your, your hand of seven, you have to draw again which is fine, but your opponent gets an extra card. And that's why we wanted to add in those keys as well, just to try and frustrate the game a little bit more um, while not giving them a chance to have their, their strategy. Now, if you go first, you have an 85% chance of being able to attach energy on your first turn. That's the amount of energy we've put in this, this deck. Um, and look, that's because supporters can't be played by persons who go first on their first turn. But if you go second, you have a 90% chance of being able to attach energy on your first turn, which is a great thing to do. So maybe, yeah, consider going going second. Because uh, also, you can take as much time as you want, especially if you freeze out the abilities of the Lost Box. Why? Because I've included some supporter cards that'll help you go and fetch some energy. Now, like I say, I would say around 30% of your opponents are going to be Lost Box and God of War. Lost Box is what this deck is the most effective about because it's, you know, um, it shuts down a lot of those abilities. Lost Box is winning and it is quite cheap to build, so a lot of people are using it, but it is sometimes slow and complicated to, to play with. And that what makes God of War also quite popular because it's also winning. It's a lot more simple than the Lost Box, but it can sometimes be tricky to find those those cards, um, especially the Zykons from Celebrations. I've luckily just managed to store nine nine of them so you'll see in the next slide that i've created quite a few god of war decks for us to all play with but please note that yeah, this isn't the deck that i would recommend to anyone who's played pokemon for a long time because it will get hurt very much by some of the the opponents um the other pokemon uh, decks will yeah well, you won't, you won't be in a strong position against on the other decks. Like I say, Lost Box is your best chance of winning. God of War, like I say, it's not as powerful against Lost uh, God of War as it is against Lost Box, but it should put up a little bit of a fight given those tools that we've attached to it. But let's look at my decks, and then we're going to end off this video. Gosh, it's been over 30 minutes, so <laughs> let's get straight to it. So my decks, I use a Meridian EX decks. What I use, I just kind of like it. But I do have Lost Box decks. I've got two of these for advanced players. Um, I've also got two God of War decks. Again, these are great for advanced players. I also have a few fun decks. This is for mid-tier players who just want to come in, enjoy the game, not taking it too seriously, but still want to be kind of competitive. Um, I can always explain the exact strategies behind these kind of decks, but I'm not even going to pronounce oink. Yeah, I'm not going to pronounce that name. Um, and then I've got uh, an experimental Meridian deck. And then, like I say, if it's your first time playing, I've got this Empoleon V uh, deck and one or two other experimental ones, which I'll keep as a surprise um, so that yeah, when we're in the tournament, no one sees them coming. But they're also, they're very, very weird. Relies on a few uh, basic Pokemon and some special, special abilities. So yeah, if you want to get involved, if you want to play on the 10th of June in Johannesburg or on the 17th of June in Cape Town, uh, you don't have a deck, you don't know Pokemon, but you want to get involved, contact me on my email. Um, 
I think it's it's a great game for actuaries because of all the odds and probabilities out there. Come to the tournament, check it out. Like I say, you are more than welcome to borrow my decks for the game. And yeah, you can join join the Yamper squad. Yamper's my little favorite Pokemon. So join join the group. I mean, yeah, you can send me an email and I we can chat a bit and see if you want to either join the WhatsApp group for just actuaries doing social things in Cape Town or if you only want to be on the Pokemon group and discuss more Pokemon things and Pokemon meetups. But until then, uh, I hope to see you guys at the tournament. Uh, send me an email and I'm gonna wrap up this video. Sorry it was so long, uh, but yeah, hope you keep well. Cheers.